Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. Previously a boy named Wong was born with unimaginable power and decided to hide his power forever. His parents then give him an amulet and a pill to suppress his power. The story continues as Hago complains to Wong about all the exorcists hanging around the streets as one almost runs him over. He yells at the motorcyclist but is terrified to see that he decides to come back. Hago bravely tells Wong to escape but also hides behind him and is shocked to see that the motorcyclist is actually Chen. Later we see that everyone is shocked to see that Chen is not wearing his school uniform to class anymore as he attempts to buy some gum. Hago pulls him aside since he is worried but Chen explains that there is nothing to worry about since he simply has joined the exorcist team. Hago reminds him that he is the chief of the elite class and shouldn't have joined the exorcist. Chen refuses to change out of his new uniform so Miss Pan calls him into her office. Hago explains that Chen is the type to stick to what he believes and Sunro wonders if they should speak with Chen's father. Chen's father is far too strict though so Wong comes up with a different plan. The plan is to use Sunro as bait and have some other members of the exorcist attempt to hurt her. Hago will record them and show Chen the video in the hopes that he will quit after seeing how bad they are. Sunro is afraid that she might hurt the exorcist in a fight but Hago assures her that it wouldn't be a problem. As she approaches one of them begins to undress but shocks everyone when he uses his coat to help Sunro avoid a puddle. The group only managed to prove the exorcist's nobility but Hago is determined to catch them behaving badly. He points out how they avoid helping an elderly woman cross the street but Wong states how it seems they might be after her purse. Chen just so happens to arrive to help the woman but the two other exorcists warn him to run as the lady is actually a demon. Chen is thrown back just as the two arrive to fight the demon and our group decides to help out. They manage to subdue the demon and allow Chen to strike the final blow. The demon is defeated and our group apologize to Chen after realizing that the exorcists are not bad people. One of them explains that they were asked by the 7 star squad to help defeat demons but because they are foreigners the people don't trust them. He explains that his goal is to prove to everyone that they are worthy of their trust and hopes that it will help bring this nation and his own closer together. Everyone likes his goals and he explains that is why Chen is a perfect fit with them. He invites Hago and Sunro to join them to which they agree but are surprised to hear that Wong isn't invited. One of them points out that it's because Wong looks both thin and weak. Exercising is dangerous work and they don't want Wong getting killed. That night Chen finds Wong and apologizes for the humiliation he assumes Wong felt after not being chosen to join the group. Chen promises to get Wong in the group but he isn't interested and Chen explains his reason for joining. After Wong defeated him in the sword test Chen's father kicked Chen out of their home since he brought shame to their family. At Chen's lowest point in life he was attacked by a monster but then saved by the exorcists. Chen once again promises to get Wong in the group any way he can but is shocked to find one of the exorcists paying the demon from earlier. It's clear now that they are in collusion with demons and the exorcist states that Chen had come at the worst possible time. Their entire friendship had been a lie and Chen knows far too much now. The exorcist stops the demons from attacking since they won't have to as Chen is clearly bewitched. He warns Wong to stay away from Chen since he is so weak but everyone is shocked by Wong's attack. The demons attempt to take him out but are powerless against Wong's immense fighting prowess. With them taken care of Wong turns his attention to the bewitched Chen who has completely lost himself. He has also gained great strength though and demonstrates that as he attacks Wong. Wong isn't bothered at all though and uses a technique to wake his close friend up. Chen finally returns to his old self and is shocked to find that all the demons had been defeated. Wong pretends to be hurt and thanks Chen for saving his life. Later a man explains that he needs to check the water in the property but the residents point out that they use a well and don't have a water meter. Yi is there as well and instructs the man to pretend to be a delivery man this time. The residents explain that they don't do online shopping and that the delivery man must have the wrong place. Yi is fed up and blows up the door to find the demons he had been looking for, the ones working with the exorcists. They are outnumbered though so Yi wants the man to hold them off while he calls for backup but he is left to fend for himself. Wong happens to come by and finds that it isn't going so well though and intervenes. The rest of the 7 star squad return and we see that Wong had once again defeated everyone. He also left Yi with a memory that makes him think that he defeated the demons but we see that someone had been watching everything. Sometime later Yi is introduced on stage as the savior of Songhai. Even though Wong as a child was really the one to defeat the demon king many years ago, Yi proudly walks on stage to continue taking the credit. He recounts how the level 5 demon king was dominating the fight and how he had to act fast to save a boy eating crispy noodles. 
Yi states that he had to overcome his fear and use a surge of spiritual force he never felt before to defeat the Demon King. He reminds everyone of the recent success of the human race in defeating the Shadow Faction and stopping the Demon's second invasion. Yi admits that demons seeking refuge on Earth have caused some problems, but explains that he recently took down a major demon hideout and arrested over a hundred illegal immigrants. However, just as the crowd begins to chant Yi's name, the lights go out, and the screen shows a recording of how Yi took an absolute beating. We see that it was actually Yoshiko's doing as the crowd watches Yi being toyed with by the demons. It is then revealed that the merciless beating was only stopped when a bolt of lightning strikes the group of demons. Yi realizes that what actually happened is completely different from what he remembers, and we see that a well-covered Wong secretly used his ability to change Yi's memory so he would think he was once again the hero. News spread quickly that Yi had been lying as students of Faction 60 attempt to defend him. Others wouldn't be so kind explaining how they had been skeptical all along, and a hidden Miss Pan tries to disassociate the school from Yi. Elsewhere, Yi reminds his chief of his loyalty to the Seven Star Squad, and begs that they find the person behind the allegations against him. However, the chief recommends that Yi go on a long vacation and instructs him to leave his sword and badge before he goes. Outside, his subordinates express their concern, but Yi assures them that everything will be okay and that he has decided to withdraw himself from the squad. Before leaving though, he realizes he has to go back for his car keys and can't fly now without his sword. When he returns though, Yi finds that the squad is celebrating how they can now be lazy since their workaholic boss is gone. He decides to walk home and must face the fact that everyone has now turned against him. Just then, he spots a mysterious figure with a tail and follows it into an alleyway, only to be ambushed. Yi assumes that this demon is the one that set him up, but it explains that his only job is to get rid of him. Just then, the attack is paused as Wong approaches, but the demon is relieved to see that it is just a simple human. Naturally, the demon is shocked when Wong unleashes just a bit of his power that is able to clear the skies. Wong once again begins his ability to alter Yi's memory, but Yi stops him when he realizes that Wong must have been doing it over and over again for all these years. Yi realizes that everyone is right and that he is a cheater, but Wong explains that he chose Yi to take all the credit because he deserved it. Yi may not have been the one to deal the final blow all those times, but his hard work made him more deserving than anyone. However, Yi explains that it doesn't matter now since the world knows he is a cheater, but Wong has a solution. If Yi takes the blue pill, then the memories of the whole world will be modified so they forget the happenings of the past two days. The red pill will allow him to have his ascension right away. Yi refuses both pills though and explains that he wants to work hard instead to become a real hero. He then asks Wong for a couple tricks that he can use to train on his own, which Wong is very glad to see. We then watch as Yi prepares to travel and Yoshiko states that the last threat to her plan is now gone. Sometime later, Chen explains that he plans to invite Lin to an upcoming gala when she surprises him and explains that she will be working that day. Hago has a good laugh at his friend's expense and explains that he plans to invite Yoshiko. Chen thinks his friend is delusional but Hago explains that she is new to town and a stranger in strange surroundings. Even though she appears to be arrogant and passionless, Hago believes that she needs someone to rely on deep down. No one else has the guts to invite her, so Hago plans to take advantage of that. Hago knows who Chen really wants to invite, but Chen believes he doesn't deserve her. Hago encourages his friend to not be hesitant, and the two decide to act immediately. Unfortunately for Chen, he finds that Soon Ro has just asked Wong to the gala, and he accepts. A disheartened Chen finds Hago and the two laugh at their rejection only to start crying seconds later. On the night of the gala, Hago is surprised to see Wong in different clothes and explains that his partner is stuck in traffic. Hago wonders if Wong is having problems with Soon Ro since she is not with him, but we see that it is because she must make a welcoming speech to everyone. She explains that close to midnight, an ancestor worship ritual will be conducted besides a lotus pool. Everyone is able to enter as long as they are in pairs, but Hago wonders what he and Wong will do. However, Wong is called into the VIP entrance as Sunro is waiting for him. Inside, the gala is very lively and Sunro explains that the place was built by her grandfather and he wanted her to bring the person that meant most to her there. Sunro then points out that her parents are out of town and invites Wong to her house for dinner. He confirms that she has crispy noodles there first and the two head inside. However, she is shocked to find that her grandfather is there and he insists they all have dinner together. 
Grandpa asks Wong what his relation is to Sun Ro and scolds his granddaughter when she attempts to answer for him. He then wants to know what Wong's father does for work, but is disappointed when Wong explains that his father writes articles online and never graduated from the bodybuilding phase of cultivation. Grandpa is pleased to hear that Sun Ro's cultivation is going well, but is extremely upset when Wong explains that he is still in the primary phase and only has a force value of 5. He fears that Sun Ro will ruin the family by bringing such a pathetic person into it and attempts to kick them both out. However, he must be reminded of the family rules established by the ancestors and explains that if Wong wants to be admitted into the family, then he must pass three trials. When Grandpa shows him the first trial, Sun Ro is quick to point out that it is just a carnival game. Grandpa demonstrates just how serious it is though when he deals a powerful strike that easily tops the scoreboard with an absurd value. Sun Ro warns Wong to be careful as it is now his turn, and he assures her that he won't embarrass her grandpa that much. Wong then gives the machine the absolute lightest touch, which garners laughter from everyone watching. However, a second later, the machine reacts to Wong's hit in a way that breaks the machine and makes everyone wonder if it is actually malfunctioning. They then move to the next trial, where Sun Ro thinks they will be hitting bullseye targets, but Grandpa explains that they will be aiming for something much further away. The targets are a seemingly impossible distance away, but Grandpa hits one perfectly. It's now Wong's turn and Grandpa explains that if he misses, then he must get lost. Wong's shot easily makes it the distance, but Grandpa points out that his aim was off badly. He wants Wong taken away, but Wong explains that they must let the arrow fly for a while. Everyone is shocked to see that the arrow has made a full rotation around the earth and has made it back to decimate the entire hilltop. Grandpa is told that the third trial is ready, but he decides to change it. Sunro is terrified when she realizes what her grandpa has planned, and he explains that he will be the last trial. Security explains that it is unacceptable for someone of his level to fight against a weakling like Wong, who is still in the primary foundation phase. Sunro is equally as concerned, but it is because she fears Wong might severely injure her grandpa instead. Grandpa explains that Sunro's grandmother had to endure the difficult trials herself, and to honor her, Wong must do his best as well. Sunro gives Wong the okay and he selects his weapon. Grandpa is stunned though at how Wong was even able to lift a weapon as it should be impossible. It is the family's sacred cudgel that has been handed down several generations and it weighs over 15,000 pounds. The first father of the entire family was the only one who could lift it. It hasn't been picked up for thousands of years and not even Grandpa can lift it. Wong puts it back but it's too late and Grandpa apologizes for failing to recognize a true god. Afterwards, the ceremony is nearing its end and the sacred ritual begins. The cudgel is supposed to be raised from below, but everyone is shocked to see that it is missing. Grandpa is confident that the only person in the world that is able to lift it is Wong, and suspects that he may have done something. Thanks for watching part 12, all other parts will be in a pinned comment below.